where every morning your alarm clock goes off. And for many of you, that means getting dressed and going to work. And a lot of you work with children during the day. And that's what Judy Sparks and Tiffany Mitchell do. They make kids comfortable. They make them laugh. They are pediatric hospice workers. And quite frankly, they do a job that most of us couldn't. Julia Dreyer with how these women helped a local family during their toughest moments of their lives. When you hear the word hospice, what comes to mind? Death, fear, maybe even giving up? The Amato family in Jacksonville Beach says just the opposite, that hospice allowed them to say goodbye to their 11-year-old daughter with peace. Her final days filled with laughter. They're sharing their story in hopes of helping other parents facing this heartbreak and to thank the team that does what so many of us could not. <laughs> <laughs> laughter fills the Amato family's kitchen. And all of a sudden, she is running around like a mad woman. Friends catching up on missed time. It was like somebody was playing <laughs> with her. You'd never know the common thread binding these four together. I think Kate paid her a visit yeah. and was playing with her because <laughs> it was really neat. Is the death of a child, 11-year-old Kate. There she is. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for the visit. I guess this means you're OK. <laughs> Where do you begin? But I made him all that. Well, shouldn't you think of my last name? I Kate my is a very special soul. She's just, she's the child everyone wishes for. Lisa Amato beams as she remembers her little girl. The smile fades as she and husband Jeff go back to July 2014. They were on vacation in Connecticut when Kate's shoulder started to hurt. When she was running at one point in the afternoon, it was, she was just letting it kind of dangle. A doctor there suggested they return home immediately. And days later, Kate was diagnosed with stage four alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, cancer in her shoulder, her foot, her lungs. You can't breathe literally can't breathe. And I felt myself kind of, my knees buckled, and I kind of fell back. Jeff was at home caring for their son, Jack, who has severe autism. I was sitting against a wall on the floor, holding my knees, bracing myself for telling my husband that Kate has cancer. They were given the choice to go into hospice right away, but immediately declined. They thought it was quitting. They wanted to fight. Kate went through treatment after treatment. Two years, four months, 10 days. But in the end, nothing worked. Kate's health was declining fast. Intellectually, I knew what was happening. I know what's happening. Your heart doesn't want to accept it. And I said, Daddy, and I just talked, and we think we should take you the, to the hospital. We're worried. She started crying and begging and pleading. No, Mommy. Don't take me back. I'm done. Don't take me back. It was time. The Amato's called Community Peds Care, hospice. It was like someone turning on a light in a dark room. The team knew exactly what to do, make Kate comfortable, take care of twins Jack and Caroline, and prepare friends and family for Kate's passing. I didn't get to see, personally, this act of vivacious smiling kid running around, but I, I did get to see it with the picture that they painted for me so beautifully. Now, the Amados had help. They had direction. They had the support they needed to care for Jack and Caroline so they could devote themselves to Kate. When people think about hospice and think about what we do, that there's such a thought of a child is dying. But for us, that's so not the mindset when you walk into this house. It's how can I bring laughter? How can I bring peace? How can I take any fear away? The night after Kate said she didn't want to go back to the hospital, 
she was surrounded by her girlfriends, giggling, gossiping. They made memories, works of art that would last long after Kate was gone. But the memory that I have of all of these girls laughing and loving each other for one last time together, it's a beautiful memory. Just two days later, Kate passed away as Lisa and Jeff cheered her on to heaven. Judy was at her bedside. Tiffany was playing Jenga with little sister Caroline. All was calm. The Amato's only wish that they had called Community Peds Care sooner to give an extra hand around the house or an extra hug when they needed it most. To give a family comfort and kindness during those moments is one of the more beautiful gifts I think any person can give another person. It's not easy for the Judys and Tiffany's of the world to bond with these families knowing how it's going to end. It's a job most of us couldn't do, but they can't imagine doing anything else. Sometimes afterwards when you're driving home, I've had to pull over and stop. And, wow, what did I just do? And then you just, you do it again, and, and it's okay. You know, the night that Kate died, Lisa said, she said, there's nothing perfect about death, but what you guys did helped give Kate the perfect death. And I told Lisa that when I get a call and I know I'm going somewhere, I'm in my car usually, and I breathe and I pray and I think about things like that because that's why I do what I do. One year has passed since Kate Amato took her last breath, the thread that ties these four together. So we'll let her have the last word. This poem is called Cloudy Times. Make the best of every day. Work hard, play hard, that's the way. Work hard to make it better and enjoy what you've done. Work hard to make it better, make it fun for everyone. Swim in the flood, dance in the rain. Don't forget to smile, shine through the pain. This beautiful girl just touched so many lives. And one thing that Judy Sparks, who's that nurse, said to me that stood out, she said whenever she meets someone new, they ask what she does, and she says she's a nurse, and she anticipates that next question, what kind of nurse? And she sees their face drop, and they say often, I couldn't do it, I love kids too much. And she said, I love kids, that's why I do it. You know, what really struck me is how they learn, mom and dad learn, Kate's mom and dad, that hospice isn't quitting. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Exactly, and this is such a strong family, and here they are one year out, and they're sharing their story because they say, you know, they help them say goodbye to Kate in these most peaceful terms, and they, I have to thank them so much for being so open with me and letting me into their lives to tell this story. It, um, it changed me, for sure. And there was one line I saw in your story. It said, shine through the pain, and those women are definitely, I would say, a shining light mm -hmm. during a difficult they are. time yeah. like they are. this. God bless people like that, huh? No right. doubt about it. Thank Julia, you, Julia. Julia, beautiful story. Thanks so much for sharing. We'll be right back.